Welcome back. Um, you have a needle on the plane. You want to rotate it 45 degrees around either endpoint. You like it to end up back where it started. Uh. Yeah, I was thinking. See, I joined route two. So if I just... So if I do the problem with 90 degree... Like, can I do the problem with 90 degree angles first? If it's 90 degree angles, um... Then... It always points from points with odd sum. Or even sum to odd sum, right? So if I do 90 degrees, then... There's a parity invariant where... These things always look like that. Right. Okay, so the problem comes that now you have 45 degrees. It's even... Jesus. So if I rotate it 45 degrees, oh, this is awful. 45. You know, I feel like I've seen this picture before. Is the answer yes? I hope not, but it could be. But wait, hang on. I've seen this picture before somewhere. Where have I seen this before? Uh. Is this that, that 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 freaking problem? That the one that um broke the record for longest solve on stream. It was just like this, right? Where you had a we started with two points and then we kept rotating them around and see what like yeah. I don't know if it's relevant. I just, it just reminded me of it. Um, it it, it had the because I was about to draw the same picture I drew in that problem. Oh, what a brutal problem that was. <laughs> when will you put Moe's? Mm. Doesn't bode well. Yeah, I agree. It's not a good sign. <laughs> So, okay, well, we okay. I gotta do what you gotta do. So let, let's introduce the root of unity. All right. So for example, I can have it point. But actually, we only need to distinguish between. Okay, you can rotate it around. Um... I I thought we had to keep track of orientation, but you don't because actually, like, you know, for. Me Wherever the endpoint of the needle is, it can point in any of the eight directions. You can just spin it however you want. So it really, I think it makes sense to talk about what points can the needle go to if I rotate it around the other endpoint. So the needle is point is somewhere, and it's pointing some way, and then you can rotate it. Um, so like, so it looks like that or something. So from Z. There's eight different endpoints that uh, new endpoints you can access. Um, what are those endpoints? Oh my god, I don't want to compute this. 
Uh, oh, okay. So let's say this displacement vector is called um, R. All right, so th this is... Should I call it R or something else? Letter R. Whatever, we'll call it R. And we're gonna fix omega equals cosine 45 degrees plus I sine 45. This is R over omega. Right. Yeah, that's the idea, I think. So Z, from, from any Z, the places you can go are Z plus omega to the something plus omega to the something minus one. I think those are Two places you can go. I feel like I can actually explicitly compute what this vector is, right? Like this, this is something. I don't know. This is like a sixty-seven and a. This plus rotations of it. Oh, this is gonna be really. This is not gonna be fun, but I think it's. Okay, let me let me orient it, really quick. Um. So if I have Z and then I rotate it like that, what is this blue vector? This is the other thing I'm allowed to add by. Um, so just the reachable points, okay. You know what, you're right, I agree. We should use, so okay, two things. First of all, I flipped the sign, shame on me. Uh, second of all, yes, I agree that we should just take mod. Can I take mod omega minus one? Or omega... I think so, right? Okay, so... Yeah, I was going to compute this thing, but there's no need. Um... So what do I want to do? I want to show that zero is not congruent to one modulo one comma modulo omega minus one in the ring Z adjoin omega. That's where I'm working. Okay, um, the answer is definitely no, right? Because omega minus one is probably not a unit. So another way I can think of this is I can write this as z adjoin some indeterminate. Let me do some z adjoin x mod x to the fourth plus one. And I would like to show that x plus 1, not a unit. Is that true? Maybe it's not true. Oh, no, it's, it's not. Okay. So what I do is I look at z adjoin x mod x plus 1, x to the fourth plus 1. And if x plus 1 is really a unit, then... Sorry, it should be x minus 1. If x minus 1 is really a unit, this should be... Um, this should be finite. Or not finite. This should be trivial. Like x plus 1... x minus 1 and x to the 4th plus 1 should be what's... Ugh, I'm... I'm using a lot of terminology now. <laughs> but... Um, I'll, I'll tell you what. Let's mod out by x minus 1. Okay, so you mod out by omega minus 1 and omega to the 4th plus 1. So the ring you get is looks like this. Well, since I'm modding by x minus 1, um, you know, you can just replace x with 1 everywhere. So replace x with 1 everywhere, this is z mod 2, i.e. it's f2. So 
So what that means is this is not part of any maximal ideal. Or it's part of the max. Yeah, like when I quotient it out, the thing you get is actually F2. So whoop de doo. Ta da! <laughs> Where does this all the algebraic number theory I'm getting these days? <laughs> Is that it? Is there anything else I need to check? Can we use my 1997 for finally? All right, all right, well, you use my 97 for. Uh, let me check the solution's correct. Wow, today is the day. Maybe I can actually play video games today. Use some, uh, okay, what was this? Tournament of Towns? What happened? We solved the problem. We only keep track of the left endpoint under rotations by Z, nothing changes. So rotations around the other endpoint correspond to Z maps to Z plus omega to minus omega to the K minus one for some choice of O. The claim is that um, we never can Yeah, I think the fact that the 90 degree case was the easy parity argument kind of gave away it was probably what was going to happen here as well. Um, it's just you need to be more technical about it. Which one? To prove this, we show zero claim zero is not equal to one mod omega minus one in Z adjoin omega. An invariant. Okay, so proof. Um, it suffices to show z omega minus has at least two elements. Is not the f right z adjoin omega equals z adjoin t mod t to the four plus one. Then Z T mod T to the four plus one T minus one, which is isomorphic to Z mod two F two as desired.
we're done. All right. Which problems have we done so far? We did the planar graph problem, like Ferry's theorem. We solved 2014A2 very quickly, and we got this one pretty quickly as well.